We'd like to take a moment to thank our listeners sincerely for your support of Honest News Network Ministry. If you're interested in supporting this ministry, please use the information provided. Thank you. Each prayer I pray, each step I take, I'm near a home than I was yesterday. Let's pray. Our Heavenly Father, God, we need your help. Lord, we really need your help. We realize that we can't serve you, we can't obey you, we can't overcome, Lord, without your help. We can't even be saved without your help. We need you, Lord, to help us. More than ever, we're depending on you, Lord, looking to you for your strength, looking to you for your wisdom, for your knowledge. All we have need of, Lord, is in you. We have no sufficiency, Lord, of ourselves. All our sufficiency is of you, Lord. Lord, we pray that you'll bless and anoint this message, this time as we minister your word, Lord. In the name of Jesus, Lord, we pray. Amen. Have you got to the place yet where you're lovesick? Have you got to that place yet? Do you know what it is to be lovesick? We begin with Song of Solomon, chapter 5, and verse 8. I charge you, O daughters of Jerusalem, if you find my beloved that you tell him, I am sick of love. I am lovesick. The emphasis is being placed upon sick. That word in the original Hebrew has to do with being wounded. Why is she in this condition? Why is the bride in this condition? Listen to what it says. Listen to what it says. I open to my beloved... But my beloved had withdrawn himself and was gone. My soul failed when he spake. I sought him, but I could not find him. I called him, but he gave me no answer. Are you listening, people? Do you see why she's wounded? Do you see why she is sick with love? Look at the heartache here. Look at the wound. She loves him but she can't find him. I sought him, but I could not find him. 
I called him, dear God, but he gave me no answer. Nothing will cause your heart to ache when the Lord does not give you an answer. I believe that this is where the bride is in this hour. We're going to have to seek the Lord, people. How many know he will answer? But he's not going to answer until we get serious. Amen. If we look at the context of this, we see that she put him off. He was knocking, right? But she made light of it. And when she finally decided to get out of the bed and come to the door, it was too late. Anybody listening? When she finally woke up, it was too late. He was gone. Do you see why she is lovesick? Do you see why she is troubled? Why she's deeply wounded? Dear God, people. She loves him. She loves him. But she put him off. She made light of it. Notice what it says. I sleep. But my heart waketh. It is the voice of my beloved that knocketh saying, open to me, my sister, my love, my dove, my undefiled. For my head is filled with dew and my locks with the drops of the night. She says, I sleep. He's knocking at the door and she's asleep but it says she begins to wake up. Unlike the church, there are some in the body of Christ that are waking up, that can hear his voice knocking. Are you listening? They're being stirred. But if you put the Lord off, if you make light of his dealings, he came to get her. He came to receive her. He came to get her, but she wasn't ready. Anybody listening? She's now distraught. She's troubled. She's deeply wounded. She's lovesick. Amen. Did you know that the world today, the science and the psychologists, psychiatrists, do you know what they're saying about someone that's lovesick? They're saying that they have a mental disorder. They're not right. Something's not right, they say, if somebody is totally consumed with somebody. They say that's that that's not right. For When you're totally consumed with another person. You love them so much that you're consumed with them. They say that's, that's a mental disorder. Now, when we read the context of this phrase, these words, I am sick of love. We've got to look at the context in the whole of the book of Song of Solomon. See, there's another place in Song of Solomon where this is mentioned as well. Song of Solomon 2 and 4 says, 
He brought me to the banqueting house. His banner over me was love. Stay me with flagons. Comfort me with apples. I am sick of love. His left hand is under my head, and his right hand doth embrace me. Listen to the next verse. I charge you, O ye daughters of Jerusalem, by the rose and by the hinds of the field, that you stir not up nor awake my love till he please. She understands that if he is awoken. Now the scripture says the, the God, that God never sleeps, he never slumbers nor sleeps. So what does it mean, don't wake him up? It has to do with his wrath, people. You don't want to stir up God's wrath. Let him sleep. Amen? Let his anger sleep. Let the wrath of God sleep. Don't stir it up by making the Lord angry. Amen. He's already angry all the day long with the sinner. Amen. There, there are things that God's already angry about. You don't need to make him any more angry. Amen. Don't stir up his anger. Don't awaken his anger. Let his anger, let his wrath sleep. Amen. She's looking for him. She's looking for him. She can't find him. Are you listening? That's what this whole uh, message is about. He's chasing her. He's trying to get her to open up to him. And then finally... When he does get her to open up the door, it's too late. He's gone. He's withdrawn himself. She is lovesick. She is heartbroken. Are you listening? He's giving her no answer. All this time he's been pursuing her. And now, she says, now I'm ready. The Lord says it doesn't work that way. If you don't come when I call, he brought me to the banqueting house. His banner over me is love. That word banqueting has to do with being intoxicated. Intoxicated folks, lovesick, so intoxicated with his love that now, because she can't find him, he's giving her no answer. She's heartbroken. What's the Lord doing? He's getting her attention. He's trying to help her to understand the value, his value. You don't put the Lord off, people. Amen. You don't put the Lord off when he's knocking. How many know you can't seek the Lord on your own merit? If the Father doesn't draw, you can't come. Amen. Except the Father draw, Jesus said, you can't come. If God's grace does not call you and draw you, you can't come to the Lord. So when the Lord is dealing with you, when the grace of God is reaching out to you, when the presence of God is dealing with you and stirring you to follow the Lord, to listen to him, to obey him, you better do it then. Amen. When she opened the door, it was too late. It was too late. 
Amen. I rose up to open to my beloved. And my hands dropped with myrrh. My fingers with sweet smelling myrrh upon the handles of the lock. Myrrh has to do with suffering. It seems like nobody wants anything to do with Jesus Christ today, the suffering Savior. Oh, yeah, they want to follow Jesus in the good times, when everything's going well, when everything's going good. In the sweet times, we want to follow him, but we don't want to follow him in the bitter. We don't want to follow him in the suffering. Amen? We put off the suffering Savior, don't we? We put off the suffering Savior. What did Paul the Apostle say? Oh, that I might know him in the fellowship of his suffering. Paul wasn't interested in knowing just the Lord in the good times and in the sweet. He was interested in knowing the Lord and the most bitter experience the Lord ever went through in his sufferings. Amen. Paul's the one that said, I am crucified with Christ. Paul wanted to be identified with Jesus Christ in the cross. How many want that? How many desire that today? want to be identified with Jesus Christ in the cross. Amen. Are you ashamed to bear your own cross? Are you ashamed to take up your cross and follow Jesus? Are you ashamed to deny yourself and crucify the flesh? Are you afraid or are you ashamed to be identified with Jesus? Some of you that are listening right now, you're intoxicated with the Lord. You're intoxicated. You're lovesick. Some of you. But how many are in this place where you finally have opened the door to the Lord after putting him off? And he's withdrawn himself. He's not giving you any answer. Is that you? How many know God's people are not all in the same place? Did you know there are some that are still in this place where the Lord's knocking? And some are going to respond and open the door before he withdraws himself. Amen. How many know the book of Song of Solomon is not prophecy? It doesn't have to be this way. You can open the door now, glory to God, and let the Lord come in. You can open the door. Amen. Behold, I stand at the door and knock. If any man hear my voice and open the door, I will come in and to him and sup with him and he with me. Amen. You can open the door, brothers and sisters. You don't have to put it them off. You don't have to make light of it. You don't have to make excuses. You don't have to be like the Shulamite. You can learn from the scripture what happened to the Shulamite. It doesn't have to happen to you. Will you accept the challenge today? You don't have to be chasing after the Lord and him not giving you answer, him not responding to you. I opened to my beloved, but my beloved hath withdrawn himself and was gone. That does not have to be the case, people. You don't have to be in that condition. 
How many know in the first three and a half years of the tribulation hour, the church is going to be in this place? Oh, yeah. The church is finally going to open the door. And they're going to find out the Lord ha- is gone. He's with his beloved. He's with his bride. Are you listening? For the first three and a half years, the church is going to be in the wilderness being nourished for three and a half years from the face of the serpent. You don't have to put him off. You don't have to be lukewarm. You don't have to be asleep, brothers and sisters. It's high time to awake out of our sleep, brothers and sisters. They that sleep, sleep in the night. They that be drunken are drunken in the night. We are to be sober and we are to be of the day. Glory to God. It's high time to awake out of our sleep, brothers and sisters. It's high time. To awake. You don't have to sleep. You don't have to make excuses. You can learn. Amen. Let's back up a little bit here. I sleep but my heart waketh. It is the voice of my beloved that knocketh, saying, open to me, my sister, my love, my dove, my undefiled. For my head is filled with dew and my locks with the drops of the night. Open the door. I feel his presence right now. He's standing at the door knocking. If any man hear his voice and open the door, he, he will come in and sup with them. Amen? This doesn't have to be you. I put off my coat making excuses. How shall I put it on? I've washed my feet. How shall I defile them? This doesn't have to be you. Amen. Don't make excuses any longer. The Lord said he's going to do a quick work in righteousness in this hour. If we will respond to him, if we'll open the door to him. Amen? Lift up your heads, O ye gates, ye everlasting doors, and the King of glory will come in. When you begin to see these things coming to pass, Jesus said, look up. Lift up your heads, O ye gates. Your redemption is drawing near. You don't have to be like the lukewarm in this hour. You can open the door. You can open your heart. You can open up to him. Amen. And you can let him come in. He's knocking right now. This message, he's knocking. His voice is knocking. Is it not stirring you? Is it not stirring something in your heart? You don't have to be lovesick. You don't have to be heartbroken. You don't have to be in this condition. Because if you open the door, you won't be. Amen. I rose to open to my beloved. My hands dropped with myrrh and my fingers with sweet-smelling myrrh upon the handles of the lock. You don't have to do this. The door's locked from the inside. God will not violate or force you against your will. 
You must remove the lock. Amen. How many know you're not your own? You've been bought with a price. The only thing God's not going to violate is your will. He's not going to go against your will. He's not going to force you. You have to open the door. You have to respond. He's knocking, but it's you that must open the door. He's not going to open the door. Amen? You must open up to him. He is the door. He is the way, the truth, and the life. No man goes unto the Father but by him. But you must open up. In the same context, we see the flowers appear upon the earth. The flowers are blooming. They're in full peak. They're opening up. It's springtime. Amen. Brothers and sisters, Can we hear the warning? Can we hear the warning? Arise, my love, my fair one, and come away. He's giving warning. That's what this whole song of Solomon is all about. It's God's warning to his beloved. If you put the Lord off, he may withdraw himself. Amen? He may leave without you. He may walk away without you. He came to get you. He came to take you. This is his bride. He purchased. He paid a price for. He gave his life for. You're bought with a price. You're to glorify God in your body. The redemption of the purchased possession, people. But God's not going to force us against our will. Amen. We must willingly open the door, open our hearts, open up to him. Amen. I trust that this message is stirring you. I I trust it's stirring your heart. You're being stirred to run after him. She says, draw me, and we will run after thee. Amen. I told you years ago, the Lord spoke to me and said, you can put yourself anywhere you want in the Bible. Anywhere. According to your faith, son, where do you see yourself, son? Amen, people. Do you see yourself in the pig pen? In the dung hill? Or do you see yourself in the throne with Christ? But you got to have real faith. You got to believe him for that. You got to seek him for that. It's not superficial, people. Without faith, it's impossible to please God. God's looking for diligence. He's looking for those that will diligently seek him. He's knocking at the door. The latest see in church won't listen. They have need of nothing, they say. Even though they don't know they're wretched, they're poor, they're blind, miserable, and naked. But out of the lukewarm church, God is taking out a bride. Amen? Not one that puts him off. Not one that makes light of the gospel, makes light of the message, makes light of the warning. She's opening to him. I opened To my beloved. 
but she opened too late. Amen. Don't let that be you. God bless you. Got the power in the name.